I decided for this project that I'd try combining the essential parts of all three of Howard Johnson's magnetic motor patents into one design. I did this in steps and tried out different arrangements of magnets on the rotor as I went along, simply to rule out which methods work better than others. I also set aside the aluminum rotor I used in my last video and used this plexiglass one instead. The center hole was different in size, so I 3D printed a new bearing assembly to accommodate the changes. When I'm experimenting with these things, I have a general design that I want to build, but we'll get there in steps so that I can try different ideas as they occur to me. Sometimes it's simply moving the rotor closer or further from the stator assembly, or adding more magnets to the rotor, changing the spacing of the magnets. Other times I try magnetic arrangements that occur to me as I go along, change the direction of the spacing, and add or subtract the parts that seem to deliver the best results. There's a lot of experimenting that goes along with it, and I try to record as much of the testing as I feel is relevant for further study. Sometimes I come up with completely different ideas after reviewing the footage later on. I try to share portions of all of this with you in my videos so that you can take what I've done and carry on your own experiments or tweak things I've done. Configuring the magnets in specific arrangements gives you directional rotation. You can control the direction that your rotor will spin by angling the spins of the magnets by the way that you arrange them and the materials you use to create the gates that propel the rotor along specific areas in the stator assembly. I mentioned in my video breaking the one inch barrier that most stator assemblies for these types of devices only complete a partial 360 degree rotation once you push the rotor past an area of repulsion and they cease rotation once the rotor enters the area of magnetic flux you had to push the rotor past in order to achieve partial rotation. What the rotor on this device does is accelerate when you start it at the opening to any magnetic gate present in the stator assembly. So the key to achieving continuous rotation in this type of system is to arrange the magnets on the rotor in such a way as to cause them to pass smoothly from one gate to the next. It's more a matter of precision in this case than design, though the design is very important as well. It might not look like it, but because of the fact that the rotor accelerates at the opening of each gate and stops at the entrance of the following gate, this is a really important achievement. The reason being is that it's now just a matter of angling the magnets in the exact spacing on the stator and rotor and configuring the magnets correctly on the rotor assembly. I'm going to show you exactly how the magnets are arranged and why I arranged them this way. It might surprise you, but this design utilizes portions of all three of Howard Johnson's magnetic motor pad designs. All three of his designs included these banana-shaped magnets. They were originally composed of ferrite, rubber, and neodymium magnets. The same materials were present in most of the stator assemblies. The reason for mixing the materials was that by arranging the magnets in a specific way using the right materials, he could cause the poles to momentarily flip as the stator magnets reacted to the rotor magnets as they passed through the gates. No one knows exactly how he did this, but there are quite a bit of clues in his patents and in videos and photos of his research. Here's an example of how one of his gates functions. So this design employs this principle from Johnson's first magnetic motor patent, 
when you gradually decrease the spacing between the magnets and shield the opposite poles in order to aid in the rotation of the device. The direction of the rotor magnets determines the direction it will spin. This design also employs this method from Howard Johnson's second magnetic motor patent to create a series of small gates for the rotor pass through by angling the spins of the magnets to cause a north pole in the gate assembly to attract the north pole of the rotor magnets once they are within one half inch of the gate opening. These magnetic arrangements in the interior of the stator assembly are called spin accelerators. These were used in Johnson's third magnetic motor patent. Whenever the rotor magnets pass through one of these assemblies, they are momentarily accelerated forward. I altered the configuration of the spin accelerators to accommodate the placing of the magnets on the rotor. In the patent, the banana-shaped rotor magnets were placed sideways instead of in the forward position, so I had to arrange the spin accelerators in a way to accommodate all three design principles in one assembly. I also didn't enclose the assembly from Johnson's second magnetic motor patent as that would have required a much different type of rotor assembly, and you don't have to enclose the gate around the rotor to utilize the principle. These are the different configurations I did, the orientation of the magnets and the materials I used. This was one of the most promising configurations I tried. This arrangement looks a bit odd because I didn't have enough magnets in the size I needed to configure the magnets exactly the way I wanted to. The principal idea, though, was to line up the arrangements of magnets to extend the north to south magnetic field to line up exactly at the point where one magnetic accelerator ended and the next began. I lacked the magnets necessary to assemble the banana shaped configurations correctly or to add the additional ones that would have been necessary to induce rotation. That and I didn't align the spin accelerators exactly the same distance apart and I believe that would be necessary for this design to work properly. You can see it literally looks so close to working. The rotor moves smoothly from one set of spin accelerators to the next, even with the poorly assembled magnet on the rotor and things not being as uniform as I would have liked. I might give this another attempt when I have more magnets in the right size to properly test this. Regardless, I was impressed with the results I managed to get with this particular assembly using the materials I had available. I would have liked to combine more rubber magnets into the assembly and a few other items I just simply didn't have, which might have brought me closer to the original vision of Howard Johnson. Johnson obviously knew what he was doing when he designed systems like this. The rest of us do our best to employ his methods, learn from his genius, and pass on what we've learned. I hope you've enjoyed watching the process as much as I did experimenting with Johnson's designs. Thanks for watching, and do great things.